Alright. Welcome to another gameplay video. This time we're gonna look at this new flavor, which is uh I wanna call it Storm Dragon, just cause or like Zell Dragon, I guess, because it uses uh Wind Reader Zell to power out some pretty unreasonable amounts of burst. Uh so let's look at the deck list. So starting off we run three Zells, just cause you just want to have this card as a combo piece, and it's just like, yeah, I guess when that happens, you want to run three of. I mean, it's this is not a, an entirely optimized list, but for now, I'm just gonna try it like this. And if I feel like three is too much, then I could see cutting one maybe. I run Unicas, but I feel like I should run Bell Ringers instead because uh, Bell Ringers at least draw a card, which kind of helps with your consistency, and Unicas. It's kind of bad, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. You you think so, right, Dave? You agree with that, right? You think that Unica is pretty. It's uh, it's okay, but I mean, it's like a two-two ward, right? Kind of, yeah. More often than not, it's like a two-two that just yeah. dies. But killing his two-drop or drawing a card. It's hard to say which one's better, right? Depends yeah. on the game, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, running some other new cards like Grimnir and Ray Rahab. Rahab. It's like, these are two really just strong mid-game plays, early mid-game plays that kind of just help control the board. And also being really flexible as well because they can just become threats later or they have just late game application which is really nice. Also running Sybil which is obviously just a perfect card for Dragon, <laughs> especially for these types of art, these types of decks. Uh, and yeah, we're just running the Sahakuil Bahamut for just a combo with uh, the Zell. We're also running Israfil, which is like just a really good card to go with Sahakuil, also just like a strong play on 9. I opted for only one Lucifer, just because honestly, it's a little bit, he's a little bit outclassed now by uh, both like Sybil and Israfil, so... I just run one because at the same time it's nice to have with Sahakwil if you need the heal. Uh, Uroboros is just a really nice aggressive A drop. It's just like something, it's like you play it and it like. Like I'm happy playing this card into an open board, which can't necessarily be said for cards that I used to play, like Lucifer or Odin. And you know, you don't you never really fear about losing too much value just because of its ability to just recur itself, which is awesome. And Olivia is just to round it out just because you do use a lot of your evolve points and Zell is pretty dependent on evolve and having one is nice just to kind of refill. So we have here uh, a dragon mirror, which is always fun. And I think a really important key to this matchup is is deploying your threats in the right way. And I guess what I mean by that is um because you're both, it just becomes a basically, like, you hit 10 PP and then you basically just start throwing bombs at each other. And whoever just, like, gets the most value out of their bombs usually wins. Which is, is entertaining, I guess, but <laughs> it's kind of dumb. I just think it's just, like, it's a little bit draw dependent and it's also just, I don't know. So you kind of have to always be kind of playing around their stuff. So you just generally don't want to commit too many resources onto the board because you just always kind of expect them to have like a Bahamut or a... you just want to ramp as fast as possible now. yeah generally like the thing is we both basically don't interact with each other for the first few turns because again right we're just two ramp decks so we basically just spend time trying to build build our PP up to 10 this guy's interesting he's running Goblin Mage but I'm pretty sure is just to get the Zell which is kind of nice it's kind of nice tech. So yeah, it's basically it's all we do. We just sit here and ramp at each other. Honestly, I can't really remember this game, so this is kind of I'm not sure which game this was, but yeah, we'll have a look here. So this was an interesting choice. He has a Wyvern Cavalier. 
this is Wyvern Cavalry. This is a new art for that card. Which basically, it, it fanfares and gives and takes two cost off one of the cards in your hand. Right. Yeah, so he's sitting here just clearing them. Yeah, he's comboing pretty hard. <laughs> just goblin and yeah. So he's he's just trying to combo me basically. Yeah, I think. He's playing this card, which is pretty interesting. Um, I'm actually, I was I was kind of underrating this card a little bit, uh, underestimating it. But I think that this card actually could be pretty good. It's basically like a two-two storm bane for three, right? So that's actually pretty strong. With overflow, right? Yeah, with overflow. Yeah, it's like removal. It's kind of yeah, it's like a good removal. Removal. Yeah, I chose not to do anything last turn just because I wanted to set up for my turn ten. Just Grimmier's board, right? It's just okay. didn't need to really do anything, so I just did that. Grimmier. Yeah, this card is this card is strong. <laughs> Come on. He decides to Bahama here, yeah. which I get it. He just wants to kind of like, just wants to push, right? He he's trying to push, right? I don't know. He only has three cards, so this this is what I mean by threat deployment. Like, you, if you don't need to Bahama, then you probably shouldn't, in my opinion, just because you should always anticipate the opponent to have, especially in a Dragon Mirror, you should always anticipate the fact that they'll have like a removal spell, but. So when he does this here, it was a little bit. You have to spend an evolve. That's fine. We go you know, three, and like I still have Olivia in, in my cart in my deck too, so I'm not too worried about yeah. that. So he's pushing me pretty hard. Like the way he's playing right now is just like, yeah, I was a little bit kind of like, what's going on here? I was a little unsure of his game plan because I've never really seen this type of deck before. Like, I, I figure he's going for combo, but, you know, having this many Scythers and Bahamutting early like that, I, I just wasn't really sure what his game plan was, so I was just like, I opted to just kind of... I see this as a kind of a minor commitment. Like, this is not, like, a real threat. It shouldn't be a real threat, right? Like, so he should deal with this easily, which he does. Yeah. But, but it also topped me up, which is really nice, which is kind of important. So here, I, I again, right, I didn't want to commit, so I just did this because I'm just like, here, offer this trade. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit afraid of his lightning blast, so that's why I didn't just play Uroboros. Another Bahamut, huh? Maybe play another Bahamut. I don't know why he did this, again. Oh, he that's why, because he did, because he wanted to, he wanted to try to get me, I guess? Right, so that's the thing we discounted. Yeah. Big hits coming in. Yeah. Pretty scary. Yeah. But here I decided to do this just because it kind of puts me a bit out of range. Like, this is the only real way I could kill this Bahama as well as healing. I feel like if I just lightning blasted, it would have been a bit risky at five. Like, he could have Forte, he could have something else. Like, but I guess even. If he did have Forte, I'd still be dead here, but I don't know. I just felt like yeah, putting some distance from... He's getting his next thing. He doesn't have any evolves, though. Yeah, he's out of evolves. Get the Unicall off, which is nice. Nice. <laughs> that usually never happens. And then here, here I play another. Kind of lock it up a little bit. Yeah. Could have also got you a loose one that turn, but you wouldn't have the ward up. Yeah. I, was, I did this for the ward and the clear. And also being able to keep my Unicom in play is kind of nice. Yeah. A bit more defensive. Luckily for me, I'm pretty sure I draw my own Wind Reader, so. Yeah, he's just dead here. See, that's why Urobos is really good in this deck, because it's the it's one way you don't need Sahak Wheel to get the combo off. So this is just right. a two-guard combo instead of a 
instead of a three card combo with uh easy hit for 11 <laughs> yeah <laughs> in case that one for 13 didn't work but yeah that was pretty interesting it was looking kind of scary but it was just i feel like he didn't need to deploy <laughs> yeah i don't know i still think like a deck like ages is still advantaged against this just because you can actually keep something on the board. Yeah, you can, you can keep stuff on the board, and also that thing is like a two-turn clock in itself. If you, but yeah, thanks for watching.